Hi dear students, this is uh, Dr. Amir Godil from Team Meritors and today I have with me our young achiever Siddhi Prabhu Desai who has scored an amazing uh, result. She has uh, 196 All India rank in NEET MDS 2025 exam. Uh, this was her second attempt and the first time she had scored somewhere around 3000. But she has worked hard and has uh, a success story to share with us. Over to you Siddhi, please uh, give us a brief idea of your background and how did you achieve uh, the rank that you did um hi i'm siddhi i graduated from goa dental college and hospital uh, i gave my first attempt during internship mainly to understand the pattern of the exam and how to approach the exam towards the end so uh, it did help me for my main attempt it showed me how not to uh, endlessly refer to textbooks and um, stick to mcq solving so I started my main preparation from 15th May of 2024. Um, I started uh, the the main point is solving MCQs. So what I would say is have a structured goal plan. So that my whole point of uh, starting with this preparation was having a schedule to stick to because the portion is very vast. It's very difficult to uh, have it's very difficult to prepare for the whole year without having a schedule. So I used to answer weekly mocks every Sunday and had a decided portion what I would complete during that period. So uh, instead of focusing for the end result, I always had small uh, mock tests to answer. So I wouldn't be overwhelmed with the amount of portion that I would have. So every week I used to answer mock tests and... Uh, the plans and schedules used to change as the exam came near. So if mm -hmm. um, the exam was two weeks away, I used to YouTube, uh, what is the plan? What should you be doing when the exam is two weeks away? How many times to revise? And for you to know how many times to revise, it's very important for you to have a schedule. So I would say start uh, making a schedule. See uh, when you want to revise and how many times to revise and follow it strictly. Perfect. So, so your recipe for the whole preparation was to start with smaller goals and achieve one small thing at a time and then extrapolate it over a larger scale, which is uh, amazing because during the uh, first few months of the preparation, because the curriculum is so vast and it's overwhelming. And like you said that you got a perspective from your first attempt, which a lot of students actually do so, so that they know what mistakes not to make when they are doing the preparation. So anyone who's uh, in internship and who wants to appear for NEET later should at least attempt it for the sake of knowing the experience of the exam 100%. That definitely helps. And we've seen this over the past few uh, uh, years with a lot of students that they just appear for the first time and then they want to prepare more uh, thoroughly and uh, take it more seriously in the sense. Yes. Now, when you were preparing for these uh, small uh, weekly goals like you said that you had like over the weekend you would take the test and then during the week you would prepare how did you split the subjects like was there a preference or were you following a pattern or any strategy so the best thing about my writers is it provides you with a guided plan so every subject had about 10 to 12 days to study for so i would start with lectures i would read from bites so best thing about my writers, I realized through the internship for the bites, I never had to go back to the textbooks. So I always used to read up, just report it on, on the end if I didn't understand the concept. But the my main preparation was the MCQs. Because the MCQs made me realize uh, what questions I wouldn't get in the first place. Uh -huh. It's not about studying the same MCQs which you get correct, but uh -huh. solving the MCQs which you get wrong. So my point of preparation was to solve as many MCQs as possible and bookmark those that I get wrong so I would revise them during my revision period. Because right. the concepts are very volatile, there are many classifications, there are many factual questions. And I also would keep a small book on the side to write any factual question, data that I would forget, classifications I would forget for me to revise during revision period. So when you have a structured plan to know when your revision is going to start, when you're going to solve your MCQs and uh, go along the way, it's easier than thinking about the end goal and results and the last yeah. portion that is. So you, you completely stuck 
to the meritors uh, plan and the the pattern that yeah. we were recommending that is amazing yeah. so that means that once you finished your first part of the preparation you moved to marathon you did the q bank you did the videos whatever topics you wanted to understand and then you moved to marathon did you find uh, the marathon and everything relevant or were you also referring to other things or were you focusing on specific parts like what was your preparation towards the last four months of the preparation so towards the last four months what i would say is even during my first attempt during my internship i had followed marathon and the most surprising part was most of the questions that appeared for the exam i was able to answer because mm. of this marathon questions because i think it is more related to the fyqs that come mm. more important concepts that you should that you should be focusing on rather than the whole portion so that helped and during the last four months i had already uh, started with my revision the second revision and the third revision during those revision i would focus on the questions that i would get wrong and i would solve whole portion um, national mock tests the thing about national mock tests is once you have completed the portion once uh, you have gathered a base for all the subject the strong base so in you don't end up focusing on particular subjects you just end up endlessly revising the same subject again and again mm. without thinking which subject needs more time so mm. those national mocks in one of the national mocks uh, that i had answered it uh, told me that i was not studying cons as a subject properly i was making many silly mistakes so after mm. that i started studying cons more which actually helped me in the final exam and uh, after completing uh, during the last month i would answer mock every 3 or 4 days and uh, for me to realize where i stand in the all india portion and for me to know whether my revision strategies are going right or wrong because so okay. national mock you realize where you are going wrong mm right so you use the ai recommendations you figured out which subjects were weak for you and then you retook the mocks and then realized that it was helping you to get better scores and this actually helped you in your final exams as well so that is amazing like incredible yes, uh anyone that follows the protocol that we are setting and I'm, i'm sure that they will be able to take things because it's designed now in your in your case you follow the schedule you follow the uh, exam pattern you follow the marathon and then you're taking mocks so i think you've covered all the bases that we encourage our students to do What is your take on uh, the final strokes? Like, were the volatile questions? How many volatile questions and factual questions did you actually see in the exam? Do you think they were a big chunk this time, or do you think there were just a few here and there? Uh, so I think this time's exam was mostly based upon the PYQs that had come previously. It's not that you get the same question; it, uh, you get the same concepts or related concepts. Even in writers, when you solve a question. you always get the answer explanation and you get related concepts to it so you get mm. well uh, adverse with ed- everything mm. which is related to that content also what i realized was for every mcq there was a MC- mcq explanation because sometimes you are very tired to go through the explanations you are not in the mood to study so the small snippets of mcq explanations i would fast turn at the speed and i would uh, watch the video so the yeah, mcq video is I'm secure with news, and right. when it came to the question paper as such, there were factual questions, but there were clinical questions also. So it was a mix of both. So that's what I would. Say. And how many so, questions did you attempt in this uh, exam? Uh, so I attempted two twenty nine, two twenty nine questions. And how many would you say on an average? Like I know it's hard to tell, but how many do you think were smart guesses? smart guesses would be uh, so always in every question most of the question what happens is you eliminate the options mm. and you get two answers which are right so mm. for that to happen you need to know uh, how to eliminate the answers and i i would say i, I had guessed about 20 questions but you were able to eliminate options would, easily right yes so uh, this kind of question paper most questions were such that you had seen them somewhere you had seen the concept somewhere it was related to something hmm. so you could the the answers felt very familiar so you could uh, eliminate the answers and re- at least reduce them to two options so oh, that some you... similar factual questions yes sir nice so you have taken two exams and just 
like keeping your preparation aside, I just want to know your perspective on how different these two exams were. Because, you know, every year we see sometimes the question paper is very a quest, clinical based. Sometimes it's image based. Sometimes they are very straightforward. In your experience in the last two papers, did you see a lot of difference in the two papers? Just so that we are prepared for a different kind of an approach for the next exam. Yes, sir. So, in the last two papers, I feel they're quite similar because they were more clinical-based questions. There were no uh, fact. There were factual questions, but politics uh, wasn't given. Yeah, more clinical questions were there when it comes to cross. So, they would ask about the patient. Though the concepts were same, they would ask you about the patient. They would make you think about what would be the treatment plan? What would you mm. think? What What is the clinical uh, reason that you would have? So it was more clinical based. More situational. Uh, like they would give you a situation and then ask you. Uh, and both exams were the same. Um, around the same. Uh, though this time, uh, we had less image based questions comparatively. Mm. Agreed. And, and last year, I would say... Uh, yeah, it was kind of the same paper, almost. Yeah, so I, the reason I ask is so that, you know, for the next upcoming batches, we want to frame mock exams in a little diverse condition because we want to prepare everyone with all possibilities. So we take these feedbacks and we want to, you know, change or modify and take your inputs so that we can give better uh, outcomes to the students. But well, that was a very interesting conversation. On the parting note, I want to ask you what uh, field are you looking for and what are your plans ahead from uh, this point? So I'm thinking of taking cross I know okay. it's okay. <laughs> okay. As why why cross So I feel uh, it is more diverse as a clinical subject. You can approach towards the patient in a more diverse way. For example, it starts from full mouth rehabilitation cases to implant cases. But I feel there's more to cross though. So I'm more inclined yes. towards it. 100%. But, uh, and uh, you are going through All India Counseling. What's the next step? How do you apply for Goa? I, I'm not very familiar with the Goa Counseling. Is there a lot of competitions when it goes through All India Counseling? Um, so it does have a lot of competition. For example, the All India quota, I think it goes for about All, uh, All India, I think 40 sometimes, 60. It differs every year. State Top list is, based on yeah. the state list. Yeah, state list depends upon whether the first rank of US come in the state list wants a particular subject. For example, there was one year when All India 40 had taken the state uh, prosto department. So it varies every year. I would say, okay. yeah, it varies. It's a gamble. We cannot predict. But have you tried the college predictor on the Meritors platform? No, sir. No, no, it is up. Give it a try. Maybe you will get a better idea. I will, uh, when I, when we post this video, we'll set a link in the captions. And then anyone who wants to use the college predictor, if you've taken need recently, just go through it, put in your uh, details and you'll be able to find out what are the kind of possible colleges you can uh, get accepted in. So I think that should be a helpful tool. Well, Siddhi, uh, it was amazing speaking to you and uh, sharing your insightful story with our students. And let us know your success story ahead and what happens to the counseling. And we are very happy that you've scored so well. And we wish you all the very best. Yes, sir. thank you so much, sir. Thank you for having me, sir. Thank you.